Today we are going to talk about Q and Q plot. So what is Q and Q plot? It's primarily a plot which is used to find out if a given distribution or a given data set belongs to a parent distribution or not. For example, a normal distribution or it could be a viable distribution or for that matter any other distribution. So we're trying to identify if a given data set belongs to a distribution or not. Before we talk in detail about how do we go about using the Q and Q plot? I just want to give a little bit of background about the Q and Q plot. What does Q in the Q and Q plot stand for? The Q stands for quantile. So what does quantile mean? The word quantile uh, in essence means that uh, you divide anything into equal subgroups or equal parts. So in layman's language, I would say that cutting a cake with equal pie. The terms like percentile which you must have commonly heard of comes from the parent term quantile. Percentile means cutting it into 100 equal parts. A quartile with a R in between means that you're cutting it into 4 equal parts. A decile means you're cutting it into 10 equal parts. So coming back a quantile means chopping off the data set into equal units. So the second Q in the Q and Q also represents a quantile plot. So it is a quantile quantile plot. So why do we call it a quantile quantile plot? Because in one axis, we're going to take the data that we have, our main data, and we are going to chop it off into equal pieces. And we're going to compare that with a normal data. If we wish to find out if our distribution belongs to a normal distribution, we would cut that normal distribution also into similar number of equal parts and we would try to compare each of them. By common sense, you would know that if both are same, then you would get a beautiful straight line if you put them in two axes of a graph. So that's the premise or the background of a quantile quantile plot or a Q and Q plot. We'll talk about how to create your own Q and Q plot in Excel in the next couple of minutes. But before that, I also want to touch upon the purpose of doing a quantile quantile plot or a Q and Q plot. If you want to identify a distribution, the first thing anyone would do is to plot a histogram. And we would try to look at the distribution and find out if we find any pattern in the data, right? It does it belong to a normal distribution? Is it symmetric or not? And so on and so forth, right? So we would look at the source data and then keep that in mind what distribution it could possibly belong to and then try to identify what our distribution belongs to. That's a very crude way of doing it. A more evolved method of doing it would be to use a visual chart or a visual tool to compare and find out if our data belongs to a particular distribution or not. And that's more scientific. And that's exactly what a Q and Q plot does. Now, some of you might be asking me, there are uh, n number of tests that I can perform, statistical tests such as a Shapiro test or an Anderson Darling test, which can tell me if my data belongs to a particular distribution or not. Yes, they are analytical methods of identifying the fit between the distribution and the data that we have. We would not go directly to that because we need to firstly identify how my data looks like. Am I able to spot any anomaly in the data? Does that give me any clue about the behavior of this particular process from which it comes from? And that's why we would migrate from one step to another, start with visual, maybe a QNQ plot or even a histogram, and then migrate gradually upwards towards applying a statistical hypothesis test, such as an Anderson Darling test or Shapiro test. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of background about what is a QNQ plot and where do you actually use it. Now I'm going to show you a demo in Excel as to how you can create your own QNQ plot. So I have a data set with me. In fact, I have four data sets. Um, I have around uh, 500 rows of data for four different types of distributions. I've already identified what distributions they are so that it will be easy for us to compare the Q and Q plots. The first is a normal. The next is a skewed data. The next one is a leptocurtic, which means that the peak is much bigger than it should be ideally. So more data is hovering around the center of the distribution and the last one is a uniform distribution. So I'm going to show you 
how to create a Q and Q plot. So I'm going to copy this data and I'm going to take it to the next sheet. In fact, I've already done that. So I've pasted this data here. Now, in addition to this, what I have done is I've created another column in which I have put some percentile ranks such as 1%, 2%, 3% like that, right? You can choose to create just four or 10 of them. For example, 10%, 20%, 30%, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on. Or you can choose to create more. I just wanted to have more data points in my graph. So I have created more granular data. So this is my uh, data set. Now what I'm going to do is before I start working on this data, I want to create a normal distribution and I want that normal distribution, the Z values for the normal distribution against these probabilities. As you would appreciate, these are all probabilities, right? So this is a 1%, 2%. So I wish to know for 1% of the curve, what would be my corresponding Z value if I'm going to take a standard normal distribution and so on and so forth. So how would I find that? I would use a inverse function, right? So if I want to do that for a normal distribution, I would use an inverse normal distribution to identify that. In Excel, we use the formula norm dot s dot inv. I use this one. Now s here says to me that it is a standard distribution, standard normal distribution, which means it has a average of zero and a standard deviation of one. So what probability I'm going to give, I'm going to give this probability. So for this probability, I wish to know what is my Z score. And that I would, let's say for convenience, let me call that the Q value, the normal Q value. I'm just going to drag this for all my other cells. So I would find out what my values are for all of them. Right? So you see that it's starting from 2.3 and it goes all the way to zero somewhere here. And then from zero, it goes up in the negative scale, right? So that's how a normal distribution is. The mean is right at zero. Now I'm going to come to my data set. So for my data set, I'm going to find out the quantile values. That is for the corresponding percentage for this data, I wish to know what would be the value, right? So if I plot a distribution and I wish to know 1% of this distribution would have what value, then I can easily find that in Excel using a formula which says percentile dot inc. You can use INC or uh, EXC, uh, which is inclusive or exclusive, hardly makes any difference for us. So I'm going to use this. So here I have to give this array. So I'm going to key in this entire array here. And I'm going to give my percentage. Okay. And of course, if I'm going to drag this, then this has to be a fixed reference. So I'm going to put the dollar sign in between. So now I have got a value of 25. What does this mean? This means that if I plot a distribution for this data and find out at 1% what would be the value, then that value would correspond to 25.20582. Now I'm just going to drag this for all the other percentages. Right. So now I have uh, two columns of data. One, I have values for normal distribution corresponding to each percentage and the other I have for my data set. So now my job is almost done. I, all I need to do is to plot a graph. So I'm going to select, go to insert and I'm going to click on a scatter diagram and my Q and Q plot is done. So now I can do a bit of a cosmetic change for the graph to look better. So I can shift this axis here or uh, that I'll come to later. I can remove this extra space which is here, which is not needed for me right now. So we don't have any value which is below, let's say 15. So I can conveniently start my minimum value at 15, right? So my graph looks much bigger. Then I can um, format this axis and allow this to start at minus three. So then the axis comes here. So now I have plotted this data graph and let's say this is for normal data, All right? 
Now I can also include what is called as a trend line here. I can add a trend line and I can insert a linear trend line which is already inserted now. So let's now talk a bit about this graph. What does this graph actually tell us? So if you look at this graph on the x-axis, I have this data which is my standard normal data and on the y-axis I have my data that is the data that I have analyzed. Uh, we call this the theoretical Q values and we call the this the data Q values. Right? Now we would expect that if my distribution was also a normal distribution, I would expect that all these data points fall on this line as much as possible. Right? For the fact that I know this is already a normal data, it can give you a hint that there will be of course a little bit of minor uh, you know swings here and there especially towards the ends on both sides that's normal that's acceptable but you should not find much of a deviation the, the shape of this curve should not look very awkward as we would see in other data you would find it to be very awkward now this tells us uh, what kind of uh, you know distortion is there in the data firstly whether it fits into a normal data or not as this falls very close to that state line it certainly falls into a normal distribution and it qualifies for a visual approval that this data is certainly a normal data now if i plot the same q and q plot for other distributions or other data sets that i have here you would know obviously how it would look different how do we do that same process just copy this data so all i have to do in fact is copy this stuff and uh, put it here and rest of my job is already done all the calculations will automatically change and now I have got for a skewed distribution only heading I have to change and uh, if you see here obviously there is a bit of a deviation towards both the tails and this is a classical case of a skewed distribution there is skewness here obvious skewness here and that's why uh, there is a little bit of skewness on this side but moreover the biggest problem for us is on this side when you examine the data you will know that before we go into this if you wish to plot a histogram you can do that in excel if you are having 16 and above obviously you can plot a histogram in no time all you have to do is to just click on histogram and you would get beautiful histograms so uh, if you look at this data this is the skewed data and you see that there are few data points here on the higher side and these are the ones which are contributing here to this um, kind of variation or deviation from the state line now i have uh, for want of time done the same process for the other two distributions and i have it with me so i'm going to talk about that so here we have uh, the data for all the other distributions as well so uh, normal and skewness we already talked about it uh, leptocurtic as I mentioned to you more data is heaped in the middle and you see that uh, you know on both sides uh, towards the tails right there is a huge deviation that you see but the data in the middle is much denser and here you see that they are uh, not only far away from the state line um, but also that you know the points are just dispersed from each other too and another thing you would notice is that there is no fit to this line this line and the data points hardly touch each other maybe you know only a handful of points the points here here and here actually coincide with the linear uh, fit so that's a leptocurtic now if it is a uniform data that is all the data points are all you know having nearly the same value there is no pattern at all in the data in that case also it looks very similar to the normal distribution right but obviously some clues are being thrown out that the distribution may not be normal by looking at the tail end. So this is how you plot a Q and Q plot. Obviously, if you want to get conclusive results of whether this data is normal or not, uh, as I mentioned earlier, best would be Anderson-Darling test. It is more robust than many of the other uh, tests which are used for finding out distributions. So friends, uh, I hope this helped you to clear the air a little bit about what is a Q and Q plot and actually where do you apply it. Thank you.